A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John, and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that, knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not be spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning, never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. Verbum Domini.
Dominus Obiscum. Et cum Spiritum Tuo. Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum. Gloria Ti, Pied Domine. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions, who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Verbum Domini, After the resurrection, our Lord appeared to the eleven. And what did he do when he appeared? He was not being a nice, soft guy. He rebuked them. He rebuked them for their unbelief. They did not have faith in those who saw him after he had been raised. They did not believe them, and not only them, but they did not believe in Jesus. Because our Lord had told them that after he had died, three days later, he would rise again. Can you imagine spending three years with our Lord day and night, and you get to ask him all kinds of questions you want without going through it? intermediaries, and you get to see all the miracles performed and all the uh, healings uh, done in front of your very eyes. You're always in the front row seat in all that he did. They're, you know, being his companions. That's what we heard several times from the first reading in the gospel, companions of Jesus. You know, this is that's the life of the disciples, to be with our Lord constantly, to be his companions, to see him, to go wherever he goes, right next to his holy presence. And yet, the faith of these men were not perfect. The faith of these men were not perfect. We see that they were upbraided by our Lord after his resurrection. They were scolded, in other words. They were rebuked. They were admonished by the risen Lord. And the Holy Spirit had to transform them to be men of great faith. You know, he, he had to change them to be men of great believers in Jesus, a great believers in Christ and in His name, that they became fearless, that they became bold, that they became zealous in living out their faith. Their faith became alive. But you know, it's interesting, um, I didn't catch this when I was preparing, but I just catch it while we're reading the gospel. Um, you know, their faith were not perfect at this moment, but yet our Lord trusts them to go out into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. So even though we may have weak faith, we may have little faith, the Lord still wants us to go. You know, He will be with us here and He will help us to uh, proclaim it with, uh, with fire. The fire of the Holy Spirit. And again, going back to the disciples, how the Holy Spirit had to transform these men. And we see this in the first reading earlier from the Acts of the Apostles, that again, at the resurrection, the eleven were upbraided by Christ. They were scolded by Him for their lack of faith. But after the Holy Spirit came among them, they became bold and fearless toward those who were against our Lord. St. Luke tells us, observing the boldness of Peter and John 
and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed. And they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. That's who we are. We are companions of Jesus. And Peter and John uh, told the leaders boldly after they were being directed not to preach in the name of Jesus, they said, it is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and what we have heard. So no matter what they were going to do to them, they're not going to stop preaching. They were, they're not going to stop talking about Jesus. Yeah. So again, we see the transformation of the disciples from being weak in faith to be zealous and lively uh, in faith. You know, the life of Mother Angelica was similar. We heard Father Joseph uh, preach yesterday, uh, or yesterday or the, the night before, I don't remember which one, but one of them. Um, he was mentioning how uh, Mother, you know, before she became a religious, her, her faith was lukewarm. You know? So from being lukewarm in faith to become totally zealous in faith. Yeah? Faith in Jesus that all she did was for Him. Uh, that she had to give herself completely to him in the religious life and then doing everything uh, for Jesus. This is what a bride does to her husband, give everything she has for the beloved. Yeah. Here's mother's uh, own words about her living in faith. My life has been a life of faith, and I believe in my heart that I know when Jesus asked me to do something, so I only try to do what he asks of me. He is the one who leads the way, and he moves one step at a time. I try to follow. He takes another step, and I take one. That's why when people ask, how did you get the network? I always say it evolved. Everything we've ever done evolved. It was never planned. This is an act of God. Our witness is the total providence of God. He led us. He provided for us. He protected us. No one can say that myself or any of these nuns could have accomplished this because we couldn't. This work evolved as long as we kept up with God. This is Mother's way of living her faith, you know, um, always being attentive when the Lord asks her to do something, either small thing or big thing, and then whatever that is, she would respond. And we've heard it from, you know, one of the speakers this week, how she's afraid of not responding and having at the judgment time of hers, for the Lord said, this is what you've done, but this is what you could have done if you had more trust in me or if you could have more faith in me. That was one thing that she was uh, fearful of that. So, um, again, she knew when Jesus asked her to do something, and one can only respond either with a positive response or a negative response. In Mother's life, she strived to give her positive response uh, to our Lord. To have faith is a great thing. It's a great thing. It's a great blessing. But to act upon our faith... Uh, or to live our faith is even a greater thing. You know, that's why for us preachers, you know, it, it, it's, it's easy to preach. I mean, well, I wouldn't say easy, but anyway, you get the point. You know, it's easy to just preach it, but it's a different level to live what we preach. There's a bigger responsibilities on my part, on any of the priest's part, or any of the preacher's part, or any teacher's part, to live what we teach, to live what we preach, there's an, an, an added level of deeper faith. And here's uh, one thing that Mother said too, Christians need to do more than think about their faith. We need to do more than think about our faith. She said they have to exemplify it. She said we need to look at holiness today in the light of living it not knowing about it. Again, Christians need to do more than think about their faith. They have to exemplify it. 
And this year of mercy is a perfect reminder for all of us not just to have faith, not just to think about our faith, but to act upon it. But, and especially by doing acts of mercy. And the least we can do for people is to pray for the living and the dead. You know, that's an act of mercy. And anyone can do that. You know, even if we're bedridden, we can do that. I imagine a man of faith uh, never does any act of mercy toward one's neighbor. Then his faith is dead because it's never acted upon one's faith. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting there in the thinking realm instead of exemplify it, as Mother said. And finally, one more thing um, from Mother's uh, lesson on faith. Uh, it's about having faith and producing the fruit of faith. And the fruit of faith that she refers to is this changing of our life. Uh, this is what she said. Making demands on God is not faith. That's a subtle kind of pride. You know, sometimes we fall into that. I fall into that. Making demands on God, asking God for things, you know, demanding Him. Making demands on God is not faith. That's a subtle kind of pride. God is not your personal slot machine. Faith breeds a humility that is willing to accept the truth that the Father has revealed to us through His Son, Jesus, knowledge that Christ is the Lord, and a deep realization that within the soul dwells the Spirit. She said, when you believe these things about Jesus and know that it comes from His Father, it must bear the fruit of faith. Most people possess the gift of faith, but they don't bear the fruit of that faith. The fruit of faith is to change your life. If you believe Jesus came to save you and give you an example of how to live, then you must live like Him. That's the fruit of faith. And when we act upon our faith, then our, our faith automatically grows as well. And so to get more faith, we need to act upon our faith one thing at a time because that's how one grows in one's faith. And when the Lord comes again, we hope He won't upbraid us as He did the 11 today. We hope He won't scold us or admonish us like He did with them. And while we have time, let's not just think about our faith, let's not just talk about our faith, but act upon it. And as Mother said, produce the fruit of faith, you know, beginning with the changing of our lives and beginning with doing works of mercy, especially during this year of mercy.